Hi, this is Kathleen Dion Taveros, and today we are going to learn to make this beaded crochet necklace. I've been posting these all over Instagram, Etsy, and Facebook. I call them my Bohemian Crochet Necklace. This is a shorter version, almost a choker. I have the crochet with random beads and crystals and pearls with a fastener of a toggle clasp and some jump rings. The supplies that we're going to need are going to be cotton crochet thread. I picked this up at Walmart. The current price is $2.28 US dollar. You can make a ton of necklaces off of one of these spools of cotton crochet thread. You're going to need to have a pair of scissors. You're going to need to have your crochet hook. This is a super tiny one. It is size 7 or 1.65 millimeter. You're going to need to have a variety of beads and like most crafters I collect beads and I collect lace and I collect charms so I don't have to go out and buy any of this stuff I just dig through my collection. eBay is a good place, craft stores are a good place, use your 50% off coupons, look for your sales. You're going to need your toggle clasps or whatever connector you want to have on the end and the variety of jump rings. Okay, let's get started. I like to take some school glue or fingernail polish and the end that we will be stringing our beads onto, I will coat that with a little bit of the school glue or the nail polish and I will let it dry. That makes it stiff and easy for the bead to go onto without having to use a needle. If you want to have a pattern to your necklace, then certainly set out your beads in the pattern and string in that order. I tend to do a very random stringing of my beads. There's no set rules to what I'm doing. That's why it's bohemian and very eccentric, eclectic look. I don't have any charms here, but you can definitely add charms, little keys, little uh, fancy things that you've got in your collection. You can add rings onto it. You can add buttons onto it. Anything that you can string onto this crochet thread and can crochet around, you can add on to this necklace. Little Christmas ornaments, little Halloween ornaments, little whatever the seasonal ornament is at the moment would be very, very cute on this necklace as well. So I'm just going to jump in and start stringing my beads. And I am not using any particular order here in how I'm doing this. I'm just picking some beads and getting my thread full. I love having crystals on my necklace and I like having pearls. Different sizes of beads add interest and texture as well and it looks really, really pretty on the necklace when you're finished, when you have a mix. So I'm going to continue to string all of my beads and we'll meet back for the next step. When we're ready to start our crochet, just snip off the part of the thread that we had the glue on for the end. Keep your beads that you have strung connected to the spool. Do not cut your thread because you're going to be crocheting and pulling thread off of the spool as we need it. I'm going to start by taking my hook and making my knot. Now I do this differently than anybody I've ever seen. I'm self-taught, but this part I was taught a very long time ago by a lady in Mexico. I take my thread and I'm going to hold it just like so, wrapped around my index finger and pinch tight in between my thumb and my middle finger. I'm going to take my thread, put it in the middle, lift up, I'm going to twist it around completely once, grab onto this thread that's in the middle, and I'm going to pull it through the loop and pull it tight. That is going to be my cast on for the crochet. Then I'm going to begin my chain stitch. When I have made a couple of chains, I'm going to slide a bead up and chain over it. I'm going to make a few more chain stitches. How many in between the beads is up to you. Slide another bead up, hold it in place, 
and chain over it. This takes a little bit of practice. This is my method. I'm self-taught in this. I simply saw a picture, wanted it, and set out to learn how to make it. Move the bead up, crochet over it, take a couple of chains. So I'm going to show you not all of the beads. You're gonna hear my grandson Boo in the background. Here we come to the big bead. Now this is a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to gently pull up that loop behind to match the length of the bead and connect it and chain. So I'm going to do this for the continuation of all of the beads that are on my string and we'll meet back to do the closure. When you have crocheted all of your beads that you have for your necklace, you can leave it as this single strand and add your connections and make your necklace by making um, multiple loops or by single like this. Or you can braid them together. You're the designer. However you want to make this is up to you and there is no wrong way. If you want to do the extra layer, like my necklaces have, of the single crochet added on, I'm going to come all the way to the end of my necklace, and then the third chain, now this is just how I'm doing it, the third chain from the loop, so it's going to be, here's the end loop, one, two, three, that's where I'm going to insert my hook. Insert my hook into the one little loop right there, grab a loop, pull it through, there's two loops on my hook, grab one more loop, pull it through. That's going to be my single chain. And I'm going to do this all the way across. So in the very next loop right here, I'm gonna insert hook, pull through a chain, pull through a chain, pull through the two loops. And I'm going to do that all the way across. Now when I come to a bigger bead, I'm going to do more chains or more single crochets in that loop to fill that extra space. And that's what they call bridging. And this is a bit of a time consuming project, but you're gonna have something that's going to be beautiful, unique, you made it, and it will last as long as you tie the ends off well, it will last to hand on to the next generation. Now here's one that has a little bit of a bigger bead. I'm going to go through both of these loops. I hope you can see that. Oops. Both of the loops. I'm going to pull through. I'm going to do one single crochet. I'm going to go straight back into the same two loops. Pull through. And that will be my second single crochet for that bead. Your stitches, if you're a beginner, are not going to look as even and as neat. That's okay. It adds to the bohemian look. I have been crocheting for a very, very long time. I started crocheting when I was 12 years old. I'm mostly self-taught. I was taught a couple of stitches. The rest I've learned on my own. It's all a matter of practice. I'm going to find that little loop right there. And crocheting with this cotton thread is more of a challenge than crocheting with yarn. If you're learning how to crochet, it's much easier to learn with yarn and a bigger crochet hook than it is to start off with this cotton crochet thread. So I'm going to continue on and show another clip of the single crochet all the way through, and then we'll get to the end connector pieces. This section, we're just going to watch me doing the crochet. This is adding the second set of the crochet, which you may opt to not do. Here, we're just going in around the beads and continuing all the way around. I want you to remember that practice makes perfect. The longer you do something, the better it's going to look. So if you're just starting out doing this and your stitches are loopy and they're uneven, please do not be hard on yourself. This adds to the charm of the project, it adds to the bohemian look, and you're still going to love your, your finished necklace, and you're going to be proud of it when you finish it. So don't be frustrated in ripping stitches out or comparing your work to anybody else's. This is your work, this is your project, and I want you to be proud of what you're doing. Now we're coming up on one of the bigger beads, 
and I'm going to be doing the bridging technique that we talked about. So you're going to have the one very large crochet stitch that goes around this one large bead. And you're going to go in several times doing the same stitch that we're doing. The stitch doesn't change. You're just going to be going in the one very large crochet loop until you get to the end of that bead and then you're just going to finish going in each and every stitch from that point on. Here we go, here's the bead. So we're going to go in, pull our loop, take another loop and pull through the two. And we're gonna continue doing that from the beginning of that loop until we get over to the end. And that's going to give us a nice bridge look going around that bead. It adds some stability too, which is why I like to add the second layer of crochet to the necklaces rather than just have the one single strand. The one strand is beautiful though and you can make it as long as you want and then loop it together and make it a shorter multi-strand or you can just have it as one single strand. The choice is completely yours. You are the designer in this project. Now we're going to go on to the next section where I'm going to show you how to add a clasp if you so choose and how to finish off the necklace if you do not want to add a clasp. Okay, we're going to now put the fasteners onto our crocheted necklace. This is a different necklace because the video is now a year later after I filmed the first part. But the technique is still the same. I have gone all the way to the end of my necklace and I have decided that I'm going to fasten it off. I can do this two ways. I can take the beginning part of my necklace and make sure I have this in the camera frame for you. Take the tip of my needle and I will go through the first loop here. Take my crochet thread, grab up one loop and pull it through both loops and then pull it all the way through. Then I can go ahead and I can tie that off and that will have joined my necklace together with one seam. If I don't want to do that style, let me unravel it here. Okay, if I don't want to do that style and I want to use the jewelry fasteners, I will take my last loop here and I will simply just pull another loop all the way through and pull and that will have fastened it off. Then we're going to take, I buy my jewelry findings in bulk. I believe I bought this at Walmart and it had a whole bunch of different sizes in it from the little ones all the way up to the large rings. These are called jump rings. And if you have jewelry pliers, that would be the easiest way. I don't have jewelry pliers, so I'm just going to use my fingers. You take it and you just barely open it. And you fit the other little loop through. And then you close it after. Oh, this one we close after we have it attached to the end of our crochet. So I'm just going to find a loop of the crochet at the very end here and I'm going to thread this through and then close it nice and secure with my fingers. It is better if you have some jewelry pliers because it can make a, a more secure closing on it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the remaining little loops. And this I have a toggle clasp. So it's this bar that will feed through this loop on the other side. So I'm going to open the little rings. And the smaller the ring, the more difficult it is. Oops.
So I'm going to go ahead and do this last ring and connect it to the toggle itself. Definitely a challenge without those pliers. Okay. There we go. So I have the two and I'm going to connect the last one to the toggle clasp and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and I will bring the video back when I have finished to show you the final look. Okay, now I have my jewelry connectors attached to the crochet thread. You can see there's my toggle clasp. But this doesn't seem real secure to me, this one little loop of thread holding on to it. So I'm going to reinforce it a little bit. I'm going to take my crochet hook and the second loop in, I'm going to insert my hook. I'm going to come over to the loop, put my hook through the loop, grab the thread, pull it in, and then I'm going to take another loop and pull that through and that's going to connect it. I'm going to do that a couple more times. I'm going to go ahead and put my hook through the loop, metal loop, grab up a loop, there's two loops right there, pull one more loop through it. Okay, that looks a little bit more secure. Then I'm going to come back put my hook right through that loop, pull that through, pull it all the way through. Knot that off securely. And I'm going to then just weave this through uh, the couple of loops back here and then pull it through one more time. So I'm going to bring my hook Pull it through these loops right here, grab that string, loop it, bring it through there securely, give it a tug, and I can even take it one more time through here just to make sure it's woven through nice and tight and then I can trim that thread off and that hook is a lot more secure on that side. I'm going to come over to the other side and I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to put my crochet hook in, a second from the loop right here there's the final loop, come into the second loop, go in through the opening, grab the thread, pull it through, pull it through the two loops, hook into the middle of the ring, pull through a loop of crochet thread, take one more loop, pull it through. Okay, then I'm going to grab one more loop and pull it all the way through. So that's more secure on the edge right there. I'm going to put my needle all the way through those loops going to grab the thread and I'm going to pull it through. Same as we did on the first side. So now that's really secure on those two hooks and my necklace is finished. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. Many blessings to you all. Thank you and I will see you again soon.